Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for April 14th. April 14th is the 104th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 105th in leap years, with 261 days remaining to the end of the year. I want to pause for a moment before we go on with the word of the day, the historical items, and the song of the day to say hello to a special gathering of my viewers. The residents at the Monroe Village Assisted Living Center in Monroe Township, New Jersey, along with their emissary, Todd. Todd and I have corresponded a few times on behalf of these dear viewers, and I appreciate him for that. Thank you, Todd, and I appreciate you, my good folks out there at the Monroe Village Assisted Living Center. It's so heartening to hear from my viewers. I pray for your health, happiness, and prosperity. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for letting me know you're out there. All righty. Now, doing the research for this day in history is always fun, because even when I know a little bit about something that I'm looking up, I never fail to learn something more. For today's word, we're going to look at a word that comes to us from a language called Nahuatl. Nahuatl. This is the language of the Aztecs from Central America. As I understand it, when the Spanish arrived in the 1500s, they wrote down these Aztec Nahuatl words phonetically, uh, according to their understanding of the alphabet. And we'll start with tomato. The tomato is a New World fruit, and it was originally called tomato in the Nahuatl language, and initially was pronounced tomata, tomata, when it migrated to English in the 1600s. We already had potatoes, though, so the pronunciation of potato influenced the pronunciation of tomato. Tomato, tomato, Merriam-Webster assures me that either pronunciation is correct tomato or tomato. And with that, this is the birthday of a man named Abraham Darby, the first born April 14th in the year 1678. Now there have been other men in history named Abraham Darby, his son and grandson, for example. But this particular Abraham Darby was an English ironmaster and he and his family played a significant role in the Industrial Revolution, which has contributed, has eventuated in this life of comfort and convenience as so many of us enjoy right now in 2023. Darby developed a method of producing crude iron from ore in a blast furnace using a fuel called Coke. Now, of course, this Coke has nothing to do with Coca-Cola or any other soft drink, but it is a porous fuel derived from coal or oil and it burns hotter than say charcoal which is what they were using before and so it's more suitable for the blast furnace process of refining iron from ore this improved method for producing iron made it possible to have iron as a raw material for the industrial revolution and that's not all he did but that's what he's best known for Sadly, he took some sort of illness at a fairly young age. One source specified colic, which suggests that he had some sort of ailment that caused him a great deal of abdominal pain. He was sick for about a year and a half before he died in 1717 at the age of 39, and that was Abraham Darby I. Now, you might remember that recently we talked about a nightmare that Abraham Lincoln had where he woke from this nightmare in which he was wandering around the White House trying to find out where all these mournful sounds were coming from. In the dream, he saw a funeral casket and asked one of the soldiers standing by, who's dead in the White House? And the soldier said, this was all in his dream, the soldier said, the president, he was killed by an assassin. This dream, of course, put him out of sorts, as you might imagine, and he told one of his good friends about it just a few days ago. And on April 14, 1865, President Abraham Lincoln was shot in Ford's Theater by the well-known at the time stage actor John Wilkes Booth. 
President Lincoln and his wife had gone to see a play there, a play called Our American Cousin at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. President Lincoln survived through the night but passed away the next morning. The assassination was part of a misguided plot to revive the Confederacy by eliminating the three most important officials of the United States government at the time. The other two conspirators of this plot failed in their assignments. Secretary of State William Seward was only wounded, and the would-be assassin of Vice President Andrew Johnson lost his nerve and didn't carry out his assigned task. Not quite a week ago, the Titanic left England from Southampton en route to New York City, carrying some of the wealthiest people in the world at the time, as well as immigrants from really all over Europe. Four days into her tour on the night of April the 14th, 1912, the ship struck an iceberg. Designed to carry 48 lifeboats, which probably would have been enough to save everybody, the Titanic had been considered so safe that they felt they didn't need all those lifeboats, and so there were actually only 20 lifeboats on the ship. But as we all know now, she struck an iceberg and was in fact not unsinkable. The thing about icebergs is that only a tiny bit of them shows above the water. There's always a whole bunch more underneath. So whatever bit of an iceberg they were able to see above the water, and I think it looked pretty big from their perspective, it had to be huge underneath the water. Of the estimated 2,224 passengers and crew aboard the Titanic, more than 1,500 of them perished in the frigid waters of the North Atlantic that night. The Human Genome Project was declared complete on April 14, 2003. This was an international scientific research project with the goal of determining the base pairs that make up human DNA. They actually covered somewhere between 90 to 99 percent of the human genome in that first series, but have continued working on it since then and are considered to have a complete map of the human genome as of January 2022. There were so many things that have happened on April 14th throughout history. I've covered some of these and several others in previous episodes for April 14th and I'll include links to those episodes in case you'd like to see them. And from the Small World Department, today's song is the Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia by Vicki Lawrence. Why small world, you wonder? Because The Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia was written by the very same Bobby Russell who wrote the song of the day that we mentioned yesterday, Honey by Bobby Goldsboro. These two number one hits occurred in different years, but still. <laughs> As it happens, Bobby Russell's birthday is coming up in the next week or so, and I'll make a note to be sure and tell you more about him then. Meanwhile, he wrote The Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia while he was married to actress, comedian, and singer Vicki Lawrence. The Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia is what you could call a southern gothic murder ballad, wherein quite a bit of drama takes place. Interestingly, this is another case where the songwriter didn't like the song after he got it written, but Ms. Lawrence thought that it had potential, and she recorded a demo. They tried to pitch it around to several pretty big name artists, but didn't get any takers at the time for various reasons. So Ms. Lawrence went back to the studio and cut a professional recording of the night the lights went out in Georgia, and here we are. <laughs> Recorded and released in late 1972, the song hit number one in April of 1973, where we find it in the second of two weeks in that number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100. April 14th, 1973, and since then it's been covered by such artists as Tanya Tucker and Reba McIntyre, as well as receiving features and mentions in movies and other popular culture items. The Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia by Vicki Lawrence, number one, April 14th, 1973. Link in the description. And I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. 
That description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include a link to my blog page that's called, no really. You can also find me on Rumble, Parlor, BitChute, and Getter. All those links in the description. Alrighty, that's all I can think of right now. Thanks again and all. See you next time. Do not disturb. Okay. I turned do not disturb on. Good job. Third time better be a charm. <laughs> Did I say 19th? It's not the 19th yet. <laughs> one more, one more time. <laughs> the tra attracting... Just read the whole thing over. Are you are you making some sound? Get on out of here. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna edit that out. <laughs> Don't alienate people who can be helpful to you. Flinging happiness all over the place. All right, back to work. I think we got it this time.